Hi and welcome to my first video tutorial. Today I'm going to take you through how to create a Bulma CSS navigation bar. So the great thing about this navigation bar is how it's responsive and how quick and easy it is to create. As you can see I can resize the window and it's very very easy just to make the navigation respond to what I'm doing. So let's get started. So first we're going to start by going to the Bulma.io website. I'm going to take a copy of their getting started template. This is going to give us the basis for what we need to do. As you can see, it gives us a bit of extra stuff in there as well. So the first thing we're going to do is delete all of that. That's going to leave us with the header content and a blank body. So if we start by changing the title of the page to what we want. So for this example, I'm calling it Bulma Navigation Tutorial first thing we're going to do is create our nav element and we're going to set this to have a class of navbar we'll just change that there we go now setting the is primary class as well is going to give it a nice greeny turquoisey background then we're going to create a div with class container inside it then within that we're going to create our navbar brand area and that's where we'll put our logo. Within the navbar brand we're going to create a navbar item. So you, you add this to an A element because that holds text. Uh, in this case it's going to hold the logo text but you can replace it with an image as well. Typically you would put a link on this but because this is just a one dimensional page I'm going to put a blank link in. So in this example I'm also going to put my name and then I'm going to add some styling to it as well just to make it look a little bit different to the other links. In this case I'm just going to make it bold. Next we want to look at making what is known as our burger item. So this is the three horizontal lines that make up a mobile navigation item. So we start by creating a span and call it navbar-burger and then we'll create our own custom class and call that burger as well. Within that we're going to put three empty spans and that gives us the lines. Within the parent span we're going to create what's known as a JavaScript data target and that's going to give us um, some sort of element so that we can pull it out uh, to make the navbar actually work dynamically with JavaScript. Next we're going to create our menu div and that's going to hold all of our uh, menu items that are going to be right aligned. So we'll call that div with a class of navbar menu and we're going to set an ID. So the ID needs to be the same as the data target on the burger item. Next we need to create a div inside of that called navbar end there's also another option to, call, to use navbar start and that determines where your navigation items are going to go whether they're left aligned or right aligned within the bar for this example I'm going to use navbar end and then I'm going to create five navbar items and all of those are going to have blank links obviously on your website you want to enter the href or the link locations for the first one I'm going to use the is active class as well uh, and that's going to give it a background so whenever you're on a page you want to move that is active class to the corresponding link so just as I fill out some example navigation items here I'm going to save the page and refresh it and you can see I've got the navbar with the burger item and it's responsive but clicking on the burger doesn't actually do anything just yet and that's because the JavaScript hasn't been created. So that brings us to the end of the HTML part of this tutorial. Uh, next we need to create the JavaScript and this is very very simple. And we just create this at the end of the HTML so that it can go off and find the classes. If you put it in the head the problem is that it's looking for classes that don't yet exist. So to begin we start creating a blank function, it doesn't need a name, we just create a blank one. We start by setting up two variables, first one being the burger 
and the second one is going to be the navigation or the menu variable. Um, so what this is going to do is for the burger one we're going to look for something within the uh, within the page a class of burger and for the navigation menu we're going to look for the ID that is specified within the span class of burger so to do this we say the, we use the document query selector statement again and then we say uh, using the burger variable we've just set look for the data set dot target variable um, or value and then assign that to using the ID as well then we're going to use uh, the event listener click so every time you click you want to toggle the is active class for the burger and for the navigation so we're going to create use the event listener and then create a function within that so every time you click it it's going to run these commands and then we're going to use the burger variable and then we're going to toggle the class is active and then we're going to do exactly the same thing for our navigation variable which is then going to make the actual navigation items move down uh, when we click that burger variable so just finish that off there add in any missing semicolons save the file and refresh what you can see now is that the menu is going up and down and it's also responsive and that brings us to the end of our tutorial. Thank you.